Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to find the area under the function f of x equals 2 minus x squared from 0 to 1 using the limit definition of area. And so the limit definition of area looks like this. The area a is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. All right, and so we'll start by calculating delta x, and delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n, where a and b come from our interval, right? If we have an interval from a to b, then that means that the lower bound a would be zero in this case, and the upper bound b would be one in this case. And so delta x would be equal to one minus zero divided by n. And so in this case, that would be equal to one divided by n, right? And so now we have delta x, and then the only other thing that we need to find is x sub i. And so when we are using this formula, you are going to want to use right endpoints Right, remember that this formula represents the area under a curve using an infinite number of rectangles. And so if we were gonna use rectangles with right endpoints, then x sub i would be equal to a plus delta x times i. And so now we could also use left endpoints, but that would make this problem significantly harder and it would get us the same answer that we would get using right endpoints. And so we're only going to use this definition for x sub i when using the limit definition. And so in this case, x sub i will be equal to a, which is zero. So we'll have zero plus delta x, which we said is one divided by n. So we'll have one divided by n times i. And so that would be equal to one over n times i. Okay, and so now that we found our value of delta x and x sub i, we can substitute those values into our formula over here. And so we'll have that the area is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals one to n of the function evaluated at x sub i, and our function is two minus x squared, right? That is our function. And so if we plug x sub i into that, we will have two minus one divided by n times i squared, and then we'll multiply by delta x, which is one divided by n. Right, so we plugged x sub i into this function, which is where this two minus this quantity squared comes from because we're plugging this in for x, right? And so if we simplify this, we'll have that this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. And then we're going to wanna move this one divided by n to the outside of our sum, right? When we're working with a sum, the only terms that matter are the terms that are dealing with i whatever is in our index here. We have i is equal to one, and so we know we're gonna be working with terms with i in them, and so anything else can be ignored and pulled to the outside and multiplied by the sum later on. And so we'll have one divided by n times the sum from i equals one to n of two minus, and then we'll square this quantity, so we'd have one divided by n squared times i squared, and that would be the end of that. And so all we did there was square this quantity by squaring each part. And so now our next step is going to be to split up this sum into two separate sums. We're gonna have the sum for two from one to n, and then we're gonna be subtracting the sum from one to n of this term. And so if we write that down, we'll have that this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of one divided by n times the sum from i equals one to n of two minus the sum from i equals one to n of one divided by n squared times i squared, right? And so then if we clean up our work here, we can simplify this again by pulling out this one divided by n squared to the outside of this sum, right? Because once again, we're only worried about this i squared term or anything with i, and we don't care about this one divided by n squared being inside this sum. And so this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of one divided by n times the sum from i equals one to n of two minus one divided by n squared times the sum from i equals one to n of i squared. And so now our next step is going to be to recall our summation formulas because now we have a sum right here of i squared and we have a sum of a constant, which should hopefully look a little bit familiar if you're used to working with sums and sigma notation. And so if you're not familiar with sigma notation, I would recommend that you watch our lesson video on that topic that I will have linked here for you to click on. But if you are familiar, then you might remember that the sum from i equals one to n of some constant c 
is equal to c times n, right? So we have the sum of two here, which is a constant. And so the sum of two from one to n would be two times n. But then we also have a formula for the sum from one to n of i squared. And that formula looks like this. We have the sum from i equals one to n of i squared is equal to n times n plus one times two times n plus one divided by six. And so if we use both of these formulas for our problem right here, we will have that this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of one divided by n times the sum of two, which if we use this formula is going to be equal to two times n. So we're gonna have two n minus one divided by n squared times this sum, which is equal to this right here. And so we're just gonna substitute that right in. And so now if we distribute this one divided by n into each part of this quantity, this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of two, right? If we have two n divided by n, that n is removed. So we're just left with two. And this is gonna be in parentheses, by the way, minus, and then we're gonna multiply this one divided by n into both of these quantities, right? So this is multiplied by this quantity. So technically we have this numerator times one, divided by n squared times six. And so we'd just be multiplying this n into that denominator. And so we'd have n times n plus one times two n plus one divided by six n cubed. And so then if we clean up our work here, we can move on to our next step and notice that this n and one of these n's will cancel out. So we'll just be left with two of them. And then we're gonna wanna multiply these two quantities together. And so if we do that, this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of two minus n times two n, which will be two n squared, and then n times one, so we'll have plus n, and then one times two n, so we're gonna have plus two n, and then one times one, so we'll have plus one. And that will all be divided by six n squared. And then also notice that when you have the limit of a constant, it's just going to be equal to that constant. So we can actually simplify this a little bit more and we can have that this is equal to two minus the limit as n approaches infinity of this quantity. And we can combine our like terms of n and two n and we'll have two n squared plus three n plus one divided by six n squared. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to split up this fraction into three separate fractions. And so if we continue our work over here, that will be equal to two minus the limit as n approaches infinity of two n squared divided by six n squared plus three n divided by six n squared plus one divided by six n squared. All right, and then if we simplify each one of these terms, we'll have this is equal to two minus the limit as n approaches infinity of two n squared divided by six n squared. These n squareds will cancel out. And so we just have two divided by six, which will give us one third. So we'll have one third plus three n divided by six n squared. And so one n will cancel out. So we'll just have n in the bottom. And then we have three divided by six, which is one half. So I we'll have one divided by two n and then plus one divided by six n squared. That's not going to change. There's nothing to reduce for that term. And so now we're almost done. In order to finish this limit, we need to remember something about the limit of a fraction where the denominator is getting larger, but the numerator is a fixed number. And so this is where our special limit comes into play that the limit as x approaches infinity of one divided by x is equal to zero. And so is the limit as x approaches infinity of one divided by x squared. That's also equal to zero because when you have a number on the numerator of a fraction that doesn't change and you're dividing it by a value that is getting larger and larger towards infinity, that value is going to get smaller. And so as it gets smaller, it's going to approach zero. And so in our case right here, we have the limit of one divided by two times n. As that n gets larger, this denominator also gets larger and one is a fixed value. So this is going to get smaller and smaller towards zero. And so we can say that as n approaches infinity, this will be zero. And that will also be the case for this term because we have six times n squared underneath one. And so one divided by an increasing value is also going to be zero. And so if we erase these special limits, we will have that this is equal to two minus one third plus zero plus zero. And so that would be equal to two minus one third, which is 
five thirds. And so that is the final answer to this problem. Let's look at our second example, which is also our last example for this video. All right, so for our last example, we have find the area under the function f of x equals three x cubed plus one from zero to three using the limit definition of area. And so once again, our formula for the limit definition of area is that the area is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals one to n of our function evaluated at x sub i times delta x. And of course, that is given at x sub i is equal to a, our lower bound, plus delta x times i, and delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. And so in this case, our value of a, or our lower bound of our interval is zero, and b, or the upper bound of our interval is three. So this will be equal to three minus zero divided by n, which is equal to three divided by n. And so then for x sub i, this will be equal to a, which is zero, so we'll have zero, plus delta x, which is three divided by n times i, and that will be equal to three divided by n times i. And so now if we plug in x sub i and delta x with their values here into our formula, this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals one to n of x sub i on the function, which is three x cubed plus one. So we are going to have three times our value of x sub i cubed, right? We're plugging x sub i into x in our function here. So we're gonna have three divided by n times i cubed and then plus one and multiply it by delta x, which is three divided by n. So we'll have three divided by n. And so now we're not gonna worry about this three divided by n with regards to our sum because we're only interested in the terms where i is found. So we can pull this out to the front of that sum, but still inside our limit. And we'll have that this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of three divided by n times the sum from i equals one to n. And so now to simplify this inside part of our sum, we can cube each part of this quantity and we'll have three times three cubed divided by n cubed times i cubed, and then we'll have plus one. And so now if we simplify, this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of three divided by n times the sum from i equals one to n of three times three cubed, which is 27, divided by n cubed times i cubed, and then plus one. And so now if we clean up our work here, our next step is going to be to split this sum into two different sums. And so if we do that, this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of three divided by n times, and then we're gonna have the sum from i equals one to n of three times 27 divided by n cubed times i cubed plus the sum from i equals one to n of one. And so now we can simplify this sum right here a little bit by pulling out this three and this term, 27 divided by n cubed, because we're only worried about this i with regards to this sum. And so this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of three divided by n times, three times 27 is 81. So we'll have 81 divided by n cubed times the sum of i equals one to n of i cubed plus the sum from i equals one to n of one. All right, and so now our next step is going to be to recall our formulas for summation again, because now we have a sum of a constant and we have a sum of i cubed, which we have formulas for. And so once again, here's the sum for a constant. We know that the sum from i equals one to n of a constant c is equal to c times n, but then for i cubed, the formula is that for the sum from i equals one to n of i cubed, that is equal to n squared times n plus one squared divided by four. And so we can replace this sum with this formula and use this formula on this sum. So we're just gonna have one times n, which is going to be equal to n. And so then we will have the following. And so now if we clean up our work here once again, we can simplify this by multiplying this quantity by this quantity, and we'll have that this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of three divided by n times 81 times n squared times n plus one squared divided by 
4 times n cubed plus n. And so if we distribute this 3 divided by n into each part of this quantity, then we'll have that this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 81 times 3, which is 243 times n squared times n plus 1 squared. And then in the denominator, we have n times 4n cubed. So we're going to have divided by 4n to the fourth power and then plus n times 3 divided by n. And so those n's will cancel. And so we're just going to be left with 3. And so you have plus 3. And we are taking the limit of that whole quantity. And so if we clean this up one more time, we can see that this n squared is going to cancel out with two of the n's in our denominator here. So this will be gone and this will become n squared. And then we're probably going to want to expand this quantity right here by multiplying n plus one times itself. So we're gonna have n plus one times n plus one. And so if we FOIL this or multiply the terms together, we're gonna have n times n, which is equal to n squared. And then we're gonna have n times one. So we'll have plus n and then one times n, which is also n. So we'll have plus n and then one times one is one. So you'll have plus one. And so then if we add these two terms together, we will have n squared plus 2n plus 1. And so this is going to replace our squared quantity right here. And that will help us to evaluate this limit. And so this will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 243 times n squared plus 2n plus 1 divided by 4n squared. And then we have plus 3 on the end there. And so then notice that the limit of a constant would just be equal to that constant. So in this case, the limit as n approaches infinity of three is just three. And so we just have the limit of this term at this point in the problem. And so because of that, we can actually pull out this 243 divided by four to the outside, right? That's just going to be a constant that's going to get in our way. So I'm gonna pull that outside of our limit. And so we'll have that this is equal to 243 divided by four times the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1 divided by n squared plus 3. And so now if we clean up our work again, we can move on to our next step, which is going to be to split up this quantity inside our limit like we did in our previous problem. So we're going to divide each one of these numerator terms by our denominator. And so this will be equal to 243 divided by 4 times the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared divided by n squared plus 2n divided by n squared plus 1 divided by n squared plus 3. And so now if we simplify each one of these terms or reduce them, we'll have n squared divided by n squared, which is equal to 1. And so if we start to rewrite that, we'll have 243 divided by 4 times the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 2n divided by n squared Right, so just like these n squareds canceled out, we're gonna have this n and one of these n's down here cancel out. So we're just gonna have two divided by n and then plus one divided by n squared plus three. And so just like we discussed in our previous example, if we have a fixed number divided by a value that is getting larger, that fixed number divided by that value is going to get smaller towards zero, which is also the case for this term. We have one divided by n squared. And so a fixed number one divided by that increasing value will also become zero. And so if we continue our work up here, we'll have that this is equal to 243 divided by four times one plus zero plus zero plus three. And then this will be equal to 243 divided by four times one plus three. And so if we're working with fourths, we can rewrite three and this will be equal to 243 divided by four plus 12 fourths, right? 12 divided by four would be equal to three. And so if we add 12 to 243, this will be equal to 255 divided by four and that would be the answer to this problem. And if you were to put that in decimal form, this would be equal to 63.75. But this would be the area under this function from zero to three. All right, and so those are all the examples I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.